HBCU Digest Radio, welcome back to our presidential series. Our distinguished guest this morning, uh, the distinguished president of the reigning HBCU of the year, Benedict College, and Dr. Rosalind Clark Artis, uh, who is at the center of, of a lot of attention um, these days, uh, has a, a, a tremendous uh, political uh, event coming up at the university, uh, coming up this weekend, where a number of invited uh, elected officials and uh, presidential hopefuls uh, will be there to talk about an important issue to our community's criminal justice reform. Among those presenters will be President Donald Trump. And so Dr. Artis uh, has so warmly agreed to talk with us this morning about the event and about uh, some of the implications it's having and reverberations it's having throughout the HBC community. So, Madam President, uh, an honor to have you on again. It's always my pleasure, Jared. Thank you so much. Um, so I guess we, we get right to the uh, to the elephant in the room. Um, there's a lot of people that are upset that uh, President Trump is going to be a part of this bipartisan uh, criminal justice reform uh, program, uh, which is hosted by a third party or organized by a third party, uh, has always been. It's in its second iteration here in South Carolina, which we know is an important early caucus state uh, for the U right. United States election cycle. Um, you know, and Facebook uh, has really exposed, you know, a, a lot of the the emotion and I think a, a, a lot of the differing interpretations of what it means when a, when a president like him who's controversial um, in so many ways is coming to visit. But can you kind of speak to what your sense of the reaction has been and what some of the realities are and how there may be conflicts between the two? Sure. Happy to. Uh, you know, you and you indicated in your uh, introductory comments that we're receiving a lot of attention. Uh, I prefer to describe it as being in the eye of the storm. Uh, that's kind of what it feels like right now here in South Carolina. Um, as you might imagine, um, many people, particularly African American people of color, HBCU graduates, not only Benedict uh, graduates, but HBCU graduates from around the country um, have weighed in. Um, they're reacting to false headlines like Benedict invites President Trump. Um, that obviously is not accurate. The reality is that uh, 2020 uh, Justice Forum, which is a bipartisan group of African American leaders from around the country, uh, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, who have come together under one umbrella for the sole purpose of advocating for issues that are of importance to the African-American community, and criminal justice reform is at the top of that list. I am a part of 2020 um, and count myself among those leaders who care about these kinds of issues and recognize that we have to address them in a bipartisan fashion. It really doesn't matter who is in the Oval Office. We have to work through that system um, with where the seat of the power is. And so I think people's emotional reactions to Donald Trump and the misunderstanding of how this came to be, the idea that we extended a personal invitation to Donald Trump to come to an HBCU campus, um, have caused people to be a little irrational, um, understand that well-founded um, comments like those that were tweeted out earlier in the week have certainly elevated the conversation, uh, inflamed people, as you might imagine. This isn't the first time, and unfortunately, it won't be the last time our president says something um, incredibly controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, I'm pretty certain it's purposeful, right? <laughs> um, and yet, we have to stay focused. Um, very often, those are diversionary strategies by people in power. Um, we know that in this White House, um, lots of sensationalism comes out, um, and some of that is a diversion. I mean, we're in the middle of an impeachment proceeding, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the middle of, you know, a, a crisis in Syria. So if everyone can be taken off task by the use of a horrible word, lynching, and not be focused on those other issues, um, then all, be, all the better. And I think we, as African-American people, have to cut to the chase on that. We have to be clear. We have to be focused. We have to stay on message. And we have to be committed to making sure that meaningful change continues, meaningful change that impacts our communities. That First Step Act was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Thousands of people are going to be released from prison that look like us. Right. And we can't be just self-satisfied with that. We can't just say, check done. We got that done. We have to keep pushing. We have to keep asking the tough questions. We have to keep pushing the candidates, both Democrat and Republican, um, on that issue and others like it. And so it's unfortunate. Um, I realize it is not a popular position. I realize that people are uh, upset. And yet my purpose is clear. 
my focus is clear. Um, and I think we would all um, be well to really begin to step back from the person in the office and look more at the process of how laws get made and change and how we can be activists in that in that system and how we can work for positive change for people of color in this country, Republican, Democrat, and independent alike. Let's talk about that a little bit because it, this is not the first era that HBCUs have been kind of at a fault line politically. Um, th- this is going back generations. HBCUs have largely been and historically been seated in places um, where there are conflicting politics with HBCU graduates and, and black residents and, and folks in power. Um, but yet, as you mentioned, our schools, public and private, still have to work with state and federal legislators for funding, uh, for advocacy mm-hmm. uh, and for development. So where do you think that the future of helping our students, our graduates, our stakeholders understand that political process, even though institutions and their leaders have to be apolitical do you think that there's something we can do to to connect our communities more with political realities and pro- political processes? So I think we're doing it. Um, I dare say we're doing it here this week. I, I hope that it's a model. Um, I don't take any particular pride in being in the storm, except that what's being lost in this conversation is the entirety of the programming this week that's happening on the campus of Benedict College. We had Ben Crump on campus Friday discussing his new book, Open Season, which ought to be a bestseller um, that really chronicles the inequities in the criminal justice system. We have the NAACP on campus starting Monday doing voter education, voter registration. We have the Her Ideas Summit encouraging black women to go out and start businesses and build communities. Um, Our kids are going to have an advanced screening of Just Mercy, uh, which obviously chronicles the atrocities of our justice system. So this is not just candidates parading through here and dropping sound bites on black kids. This is a voter education, empowerment, issue-oriented week of activities on the campus of Benedict College. And if on the other side of this storm, um, my kids can emerge broader, better, more well-educated, more well-informed, with a sense of satisfaction that they have put their imprimatur on an issue that's really important to our people, we're training activists. That's what black colleges do. We're training the future voices that will drive these issues for our communities. And so the unpopularity of Donald Trump notwithstanding, listen, nobody likes the things, you know, some of the policies, nobody likes the things he says. We understand that. But we have to be discerning about separating the person from the policy. And if that's a lesson that some of my students get this week, we won. We won. And it's the beginning of an ongoing dialogue. We have never been a people that have been able to um, be self-contained. We're always in the crosshairs. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Think about um, any vices. You know, we talk, we have these conversations, you know, we've had the issue in the media with Meharry and others receiving money Mm -hmm. from, you know, a vaping company, for Mm -hmm. example. Um, Those companies make their money off black communities. Right. Cigarettes, mm-hmm. alcohol, lottery, they make their profit margin off communities of color. Black preachers made Cadillac. Mm-hmm. GMC ought to reinvest in the black community. These companies that make their money on black people ought to give it back to some black people. Mm-hmm. But peop- we take this righteous indignation stance. Oh, that's dirty money. Oh, that's a Republican. Oh, that's a bad thing. Why shouldn't we benefit We pay taxes. We live in this country. We buy goods. We are consumers. You know, we, 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 it is, it's almost self deprecating. Um, We take a righteous standpoint and we can't afford it. We can't afford it. It doesn't, it's irrational and it doesn't make sense. And we can't afford it as a people. We have to, people have to invest in us when we invest in them. And we're not holding people accountable in that way. Are you worried and, And I don't mean any disrespect, but from the question, but I think it's something that people are wondering, you who have gotten a long term extension for the work that you've done at Benedict, HBC of the year, HBC president of the year. Are you worried about your job because of this? Um, So really interesting, Jared. Yesterday I had back to back listening sessions with every student on this campus. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted them to hear from me. 
why and how this is happening, how they can prepare themselves, what our expectations are of them for the week, and to be able to ask me any questions um, that they might have. And one of the students stood up and said, how did you feel when you got the news that Donald Trump was coming? And I said, my stomach dropped and I was scared because I knew it would be unpopular. I knew people would be angry. I knew my alums would be angry. I knew the community would be angry. I knew there would be a lot of um, strong emotional reactions. Um, I knew there would be the mis, you know, misinformation floating around about how it was that he came to be on campus. Um, and so as a human being, my initial reaction was, oh, my God, how am I going to weather this? Um, and so I was. But uh, my board has stood. Um, I kept them informed, of course, as this has evolved. Um, when there was the back and forth, he might come, he's not coming, he is coming, oh my God, he's really coming. <laughs> um, so I kept them informed all along the way. Um, I think every president knows, right, don't surprise your board. And so, you know, I took some backlash. Oh, she negotiated this deal in secret. Nope, actually I didn't. My cabinet and board were very well aware during this entire process that it was a possibility. And when we got official word, of course, even when we had a hint, we started informing the board in writing and verbally. So the board has been incredibly supportive. Um, they're committed to stand. My board chair is flying in to greet the president. And uh, my finance committee chair is flying in tonight. They're coming to stand with me and weather the storm. Um, we're going to take this L for our community. But it's so it's so <laughs> interesting that all. that that's your that's your gut reaction when the president, however controversial he may be, says he's coming and you know what your community is going to say, because it was it seemed to be seemed to me. That in your position, if I heard Bernie Sanders was coming. And I know that my senior senator in the state is Lindsey Graham. Then my stomach's going to drop <laughs> because I, right. oh, OK, so I'm going to have <laughs> I'm going to have this guy in coming to South Carolina <laughs> for the primary thing and a guy who I know is is never going to lose his seat is running, well, we, is running the show on my know, appropriations possibly South Carolina is among the most interesting states politically socially and otherwise mm -hmm. um, obviously you know it's history right 64 percent of the slaves in this country came in through South Carolina we have a long and appalling history in South Carolina we also happen to be the home of the majority whip Mm -hmm. right? Big Jim Clyburn mm -hmm. is my congressman right, right here in South Carolina. But I also have Governor McMaster. It's a red state. I got Lindsey Graham. I got Tim Scott. And I got Jim Clyburn. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting contrast. And so, you know, I have Steve Benjamin as a mayor who is, you know, just the immediate past president of the National Conference of Mayors. Mm -hmm. Democrat. Right. So we have this interesting mix of leading people. Uh, you reference <laughs> Lindsey Graham and appropriations. Right. right. Um, so I have leaders on both sides of the aisle in South Carolina. And yet the expectation is that because I'm black, I have to be on one side of that issue and I cannot engage with the other. And that does my institution a disservice. What I said to my board and what I've said publicly and privately long before this came down the pike is I'm not red, I'm not blue, I'm purple. Mm -hmm. I'm all about Benedict. I've got to advocate for my students at Benedict College. That is my job. That's who I am. That's what I do. I will vote my personal preferences and conscience when I go to the ballot box. But as for me and my role as president of Benedict College, I have no political affiliation. I care only for Benedict and the students she serves. Now, I, we know you're running the convocation. And again, we appreciate the time that you can afford us. And then the last question, and we'll, we'll get you on. Um, when this is over, what do you think is going to be the benefit for Benedict and for you personally and your brand as a distinguished president? So, again, I hearken back to my students because they're kind of the point of it all. Um, question I got from the student, is this going to put us on the map, Doc? I mean, having Trump here plus 10 leading Democrats, I mean, that keeps getting lost in the conversation. Right. Biden, Warren, Harris, I and mean, you name it, they're all going to be here. So um, the student says, is this going to put us on the map? I said, son, we are the HBCU of the year. We are the HBCU that put the BC in HBCU. We were on the map long before Trump took the White House. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, the eyes of the world will be on this campus. And so our students are deciding how they'll wrestle with that. Some students want to listen. Some students want to volunteer. Some students are leaving the campus. Some students will protest. Um, and they are free to express themselves in the ways that they see fit. 
Um, my concern is only for their safety and for how we um, present ourselves to the world. People expect there to be a problem. People want to see a UVA. And what I've said to my kids is that's not who we are. We are the best of BC. We are bigger than this. This is a moment in time when the world is watching Benedict College. Let's show them who we are. Let's be intelligent. Let's be disciplined. Let's be clear. Uh, They will not see angry mobs of Benedict students. If you see that on the news, you best believe those are not Benedict students out there. Those are kids that come from USC and other places. Um, <laughs> we've seen this happen before. I mean, we've yeah, seen right. this happen before. Look that, at Dillard. That's we saw right. it happen at Dillard with David Duke. Those that's were right. not Dillard students. Yeah. Those were not Dillard students. Um, people will come from other places and seek to create a ruckus. My kids are prepared. My kids will be the ones with the Our Voice, Our Vote shirts on. The disciplined kids who are um, advocating, who may protest but will do so with a sense of decorum and pride in who they are as a people because they genuinely feel in their hearts this person's not for me. And so, you know, I hope that uh, the aftermath is that people who didn't know Benedict before know Benedict, and they know us in a good light. They know us for being um, open-minded. They they know us for being um, willing to participate in a process that seeks to, uh, that is supposed to serve us, but has not always served us well. Candidates in the future need to know, Benedict votes. Benedict students are engaged, connected, intelligent, and prepared. And they're going to have to be accountable to Benedict College students and graduates and generations that will come out of this institution.